So I was actually just coming in to film and I noticed, here's the thing, we have a bulldog, his name's Pigeon, he's very, very old, he's like 12, 13 years old at this point, he's so old, he's completely blind, pretty sure he's mostly deaf, and we set him up an area outside for when he's outside so he doesn't have to keep going back and forth between the house and the, the yard when he wants to lay down in a nice comfy place or if it's raining or whatever. Set him up his own private space so the younger dogs that just want to play won't harass him and he can just be and exist. And in that place, there's this beautiful heated dog house and it has a big squashy bed and all the things. I was just walking in to do this and the poor guy was just like sitting there outside of his dog house, just like pulling his leg and his leg got caught in one of the little flappy flaps to go in and out of the hole, the entry. And so I had to go get scissors and clip clip the the, the little flappy thing so he could free himself because he's just so old that he would have just sat there for an hour just kind of sadly jerking. It was very sad. That's, uh, that's it. That's all I have. That's not at all what we're doing for the video today, but that literally just happened to me and now I tell it to you and so now you know a part of my day and everything is awesome. I will tell you what we are doing as far as soap is concerned in just a minute, but before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 270 of 365 days of soap. And today we are starting the summer line for the fruit collection. And the reason that we're doing this is because I picked up some scents from Sierra Candles like months ago, and they were fruit. And this one is a lime basil mandarin blend. So good. Anyway, all the ones that I smelled that I picked up from her, I knew that I had to use in the summer line. And so for this one and tomorrow's video, we'll be doing White Claw soaps because those were wildly popular when we did them last year. And for the other two, they won't be booze, but they'll still be fruit themed or fruit scented. And for this particular one, not only am I doing a White Claw soap, not only am I doing a citrus soap, I am also doing a two-day pour. And the first day of that two-day pour, you see it all today, is a pull-through. So let's go to the video and we can see if pull throughs are still stupid. Okay, so we are doing White Claw soaps today because last summer when I did them, they were wildly popular and they were also a ton of fun to make as well as a ton of fun to use because that cool effervescent, tiny, tight little beautiful bubbles absolutely delightful, loved it, but I also realized it's been a hot minute since we have talked about how to incorporate alcohols or, you know, wines or beers or White Claw. It's all basically the same, you know, uh, alcohol level or whatever into lye. And for me personally, I don't do anything extra with it. I just open up a can of beer or pour in the wine or do the White Claw just directly in and then put the lye into it. I don't boil it, I don't let it sit and go flat, and this is the result. So the biggest thing that you need to worry about when you're working with alcohols and you are not prepping it or freezing it or boiling it or whatever it, is you need to make sure your container is big enough to handle the extra volume that's coming from the alcohol, the sugars in the alcohol burning off very quickly. So that's it. Also, yeah, that's happening. 
that, that that's happening. So this is a lime, basil, mandarin scent by Sierra Candles. And I love this scent so freaking much. And I thought that it would be a really good thing to use for a white claw soap because there's like lime white claw and there's like tangerine white claw and that's not mandarin but that doesn't matter but lime and basil and mandarin together it still gives off a very summery delightful scent blend so nice and so this particular portion is the lime part of the the pour it's two day pour and I wanted to use the pull through tool thing because I also haven't done one of those guys in a while. And those are always, let's call them interesting videos to put on the, uh, on the YouTube because mostly I just say pull throughs are stupid and people who adore pull throughs get big mad. And so, you know, let's do it again. The whole point of using the tool was to make sure that it was to see if I could make it look kind of like a lime, like if you cut it in the middle in half. So that's why. That That's the reason. So, you know, let's see how I fared with all of it. Now, with this particular recipe, I replaced 100% of the water with White Claw. So that's what I put in instead of water. And then I poured the lye into that. Oh no. Oh no. I have exactly uh, 10 minutes before I have to leave to pick up the children and eight minutes left of footage that I have to do a voiceover for. We got it. It's perfect. It'll be good. So yeah, 100%. You can do 50-50. You can do 75-25, whatever. But 100% of a low alcohol content thing, like a White Claw or a beer or a wine to that, is completely fine and there's not going to be any real problems that are going to occur, occur within the pour. You can run the risk, interestingly, with alcohol soaps getting thicker faster. And so do always keep that in mind in regards to your design. Because if you're wanting a really fluid batter for a really complicated, you know, pour, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't risk it with alcohol soaps because the sugars in the alcohols can get a little bit spicy with this and sometimes they don't play nice. So something like a layered soap, an alcohol soap would be great for. Like for sure, because it ten, look at that. It it sets up pretty quickly. Luckily this lime basil mandarin from Sierra Candles, I've never worked with before, but it is loosening up the batter very nicely. And I tell you what, out of all of the scents that I've used from Sierra, I don't know that I've had any actual problems with any of them at all. Like they just make a consistently good fragrance oil. And I love that for us as soap makers. The actual pour of this is going to be everything right in the middle of the big Pyrex, the green right in the middle. That's all I'm doing right there. And then I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna put in the pull through because I'm doing another pull through, you guys. And, you know, hold it there. And then just pour this on top. Now, people who are good at pour, pull throughs, like, do alternating colors into the mold. So some white, some green, some white, some green. Right down the, the stick in the middle. Until all the colors are in. But I'm not good at pull throughs. And that's why pull throughs are stupid. And so I'm doing it this way instead. And I have no idea what's going to happen, but the good news is it's a pretty good consistency, I think, or at least a good enough consistency that it's not so thick that I end up with three inches of soap batter on my hand after I remove that pull through tool. See, that's cool. That totally works. Now this will go into the oven for sea pop and gel, and then we will work with the second part of the soap, you know, tomorrow, but for you, it's right now. So as I said, this is a two day pour, but the second part of the pour is very, very easy, very, very simple. The White Claw solution, same thing as before. I used 100% of White Claw in place of the water and then poured the lye into it, let it cool down, did all the thing things. Now, since this is just a solid color for the Mandarin portion that we are going to sink in this column 
lime portion that we made yesterday, um, I actually put the micas directly into the melted oils. Because why do two steps when one will completely work? You don't need to dirty an extra dish. So that's good. And I will mix it to an emulsion. And we do have some interesting thickening unnecessarily with all of this. But you want this to be a little bit thick anyway because it needs to hold up like a, a four pound that. And as you can see at first blush, it didn't do much. It also has some interesting purple. I know that's not really coming across in the screen, but IRL, those darker lines there, they were very purple in hue. And maybe that's the fragrance oil. Maybe that's the white claw. I don't remember what the fragrance said it was going to do. Usually I just don't get fragrances that are going to do weird things though, like this color. So probably it's the white claw, but those little lines there, that's actually the, that, that's purplish in hue, not the kind of brown that you're seeing right now. Anyway, I'm going to pour the rest of the orange over the top of this and it's still a little bit too fluid. I tell you what, that, that scent super, super loosens up batter. It's delightful. I, I'm not mad at this for sure, but I'm going to pour the rest of the orange over the top. And then I think I, I didn't put in the footage for what I ultimately ended up doing. I just kind of let it sit for a while in the mold and then poured, once I got a little bit thicker, I pulled that poured orange right there over the actual top of the green part to have it sort of encased in, you know, the Mandarin bit of this, the orange part. So that was my reasoning. I'm gonna kind of show you what my plan is, but it's a little bit too fluid to do that. So let it sit for five more minutes and then do that and then put it in the oven for C pop and gel, because why not? I, I like that. So let's now move on to the cut and we can see if any of my pull through things worked for really any of these bars. Okay, and on to the cut and interesting kind of discoloration going on here. We've got some pinks and we've got some oranges, but both are cool, right? Like that's beautiful too mandarins and oranges they're not just always one solid color of orange so that works out and isn't that cute this was very much a i i loved playing with these and doing this very similar pour last summer and i just wanted to do it again and this might just become an annual thing for me and every year i just do new you know colors but it's very interesting with this almost like an ombre, you know, thing going on there. It starts out kind of like yellow, like pale orangey at the bottom. And then it goes up to like pinker, darker at the top. It's almost like a sunset. That's very fun. I love that. The, you know, pull through tool for the lime. I could have just not had it in there. There's, there's not, I could have just done an in the pot swirl and it would have yielded the same effect. So pull throughs are still stupid because I'm still bad at them, but still very cool. Awesome variation between the green and the white in that regardless. It's very beautiful. I love that. And these soaps, A, they're giant. It's like I'm making soap, soap chef soaps when I do this. Like, what am I doing? Why do these weigh 8,000 pounds? But two, they're really, really amazing to use. The lather is so good. Such a nice moisturizing bar. If you remind me, I will give you the recipe for this in tomorrow's video because we're doing a dragon fruit. Oh, that's kind of cute. So the same oil blend, the same recipe, we're just going to make it look like a dragon fruit, you know, with the white and the black and the pink and the green top. That's what we're doing tomorrow. Very excited for that. But yeah, no, I mean, the pull through, I'm still bad at. It only kind of worked in one of the, the the bars, and that's the one that's right there. But they're all beautiful, regardless. I don't hate this. I'm not mad at this. That's my first of two white cloth soaps for the summertime. Day 270. 
it's the lime basil mandarin from Sierra Candles, and it's awesome. Those soaps are freaking adorable. There's just nothing wrong with those soaps. And you saw the process for doing the white claw and all the things, so that's cool that we got to talk about that. The pull-through tool itself, I don't know, I, just, I still don't know what I'm doing. So, you know, therefore pull-throughs are still stupid. But also, that one was not painful. Mostly because I didn't even bother trying to do it right. But not painful. So that was awesome. If you are interested in these soaps, you can totally get them at soapandclay.com really soon. It's coming. I'm very excited. Yes. We have one more version of it tomorrow. It's going to blow your mind. It was so much fun to make. I had such a cool idea in mind for this, and I'm very, very happy and excited to show it to you. So if you're interested in it, subscribe. Do the thing. It's awesome. If you are already subscribed, you've already done the thing. Hey, you're already awesome, and I'm already going to see you tomorrow. So thank you so much for joining me today for another round of Sophie Fun. Bye.